Hi. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about what has been asked of me quite a few times over and over again about 3D printing your own shells for your custom in-ear monitors for the DIY crowd that are at home building these custom in-ear monitors by themselves. Very cool, very much, you know, I wouldn't say in the long run that it's cheaper than buying a nice set of 64 Audio or a nice set of Ultimate Ears, but you know, it's if you're if you're into arts and crafts for nerds like me, then you definitely will enjoy this process. And you'll find it's very useful if you have musician friends, other people that play that you know you really would like to be able to do something for them in a way that's a lot cheaper, a lot more affordable. Getting the first set done is where you spend all your money on your tools. So these are parts that I just printed off of a really cheap Monoprice Select, you know, mini version two, very cheap. It's, I think it's a, it was a $150 3D printer. And these are printed out of a filament called PLA, made by a company called Protopasta. And they are awesome. These colors are great. This is tangerine orange with a gold metallic. And uh, I think it's the color that Joel, the 3D printing nerd, actually came up with Protopasta and collaborated with those guys and built, made this awesome color. Super unique. Reminds me kind of like an exotic supercar. Um, something that you're going to notice immediately about your 3D prints are that there's a lot of, on my cheap printer anyway, there's a lot of Z banding, you know, and it's, it basically, it's not going to seal well to your ear. It's going to have some rough spots if you look underneath here on the overhangs and uh, it's it's not going to feel great because any kind of a weird spot that you have on here any kind of a bump or a lump or a little kind of like flashing sticking out i'd almost say um is going to hurt your ear so you want everything to be just super smooth like this even comes to a little point here and that's not on this part of here in the top of your your concha on your ear right there. Um, that's going to need to be taken care of. Um, so what the first step is that I like to do is just to knock off all of the rough edges. To do that, I just grab my handy dandy any hardware store in America file and I just kind of clean out all of the, the spots that need to not have weird flashing and uh, really focus here on anything that overhangs pretty far. Now, I did another video on how to take your scans and do a do basically the 3D modeling and mesh mixer to get them to the point where they're printable. So this would be the next step, if you will. Now, you want you want to get them pretty pretty much all the really nasty prickly things you want to get off of here. Do the other side here. And, you know, while we're going through this part here, kind of explain the overall process of what we're going to do with these. These are going to be my first six driver setup, which I'm pretty excited about. I ended up getting a hold of some Belsing 10013 six-way drivers, which are very cool. I hope. <laughs> I don't know. I've never heard of them. Um... I've got them right over here, actually. That you can tell it's very tiny. So just so you have a, a good idea of what you're working with here, you're actually, you can see the size of my thumb right there. There's a couple of solder pads. That's what, on the bottom of those two larger drivers here, uh, the base drivers. That's where we're gonna be soldering our, our positive and negative leads to. And then up above, you can see the crossover network. There's another four drivers there. You can see how they're split off from the top two, and then another top two, and then the bottom two. So you get a six-way setup here. It's going to be a lot to shove in here, but we're going to figure it out. Um, and uh, I'm going to have to find a way to adapt those two sound spouts into a single. So that'll be interesting. Probably have to model a, a Y adapter or something. Okay, so kind of now we've got the really tough part done. <laughs> None of this is really that difficult. We are going to hit these with some 220. Just basic. Does, doesn't have anything special. Just 220 grit sandpaper. 
and uh, we're going to sand every everything we can down and you'll kind of notice that it turns a different color it turns about like like a white almost and kind of rough it up and that's all you're really looking for is give something to the surface for it to stick to when we start to do our, our finish work um, speaking of the finish work here we are going to be using a non-bio-reactive substance called Photoplast. Here it is, right over here. Photoplast Lac 3, made by a company called Dreve. You can search the internets for this. And it paints on really similarly, and probably a lot of the same chemicals, to a clear acrylic UV gel. And in fact, if you were on a real tight budget, the key here is you want something that's friendly to the human body. You don't want blinding headaches. <laughs> you don't want to be at the doctor explaining why you're toxic. Um, so you, you really want to make sure that, I mean, PLA itself is supposed to be, this material here is supposed to be safe, it's supposed to be non-bioreactive, all that. But I really feel com more comfortable coating it in something like Photoplast. Actually. That's, I mean, that's what ear labs are going to use. They're going to use Photoplast. Um, and uh, doing this will just ensure that you don't have any kind of an interaction with your body. No blinding headaches, no red eyes. Let's just say I've done quite a few experiments up to this point to figure out how to do it right. So learn from my stupidity. Just grabbing resin kits from your local arts and crafts store. Not a good way to go. Um, the, uh, the This part right here is really simple, of course. But um, we, once we get that photo, once we get this uh, sanded down, we're going to coat them all with the photoplast. And we're going to put them actually in a UV curing oven, if it is what most people would use it in here. I actually just had a nail gel I bought off of Amazon for about 12 bucks. So this one's looking pretty good. Really want to focus on these on the air canals themselves, too. That's the parts to hurt you if you don't get all the little bumps that way. Now, you know, you could, of course, and what would be great would be to use some kind of an acrylic resin printer. Just dropped one of my face plates here. Um, one of your, one, one of the, the, yeah, you know, great, a good investment someday in the future would be to get a, an acrylic printer, something that could actually print these out in a clear material. You know, they make some really great ones out there, the way out in the price range. So this is sort of the poor man's way of doing it for now. Now, I wanted to make one quick note that on these face plates, you can see a lot. Let's maybe try and get it in there. You can see that kind of diagonal line hashing there. That's just how it printed. That was the first layer that printed. So you're gonna see a lot of that. I'm actually on this set, I'm gonna actually end up with some wood veneers over the tops of these. So I'm not gonna to spend too much time focusing on making them look perfect. But you know, if I was, because there's two ways to go about it. You sand it a lot or you coat it a lot with photoplast. Uh, to make it look really good. Um, in this case, because I'm going to coat them with a veneer, I'm thinking that's about good. So just one more look over here. I've got this roughed up pretty good. Some little spots there that are harder to get up to. You know, a lot of this just comes from using a cheap 3D printer. Little weird little spots like this. Um, I'm going to call that though for now and say get this other spot for the NMCX connector out right here. That's going to be pretty good for my purposes. 
Okay, so our next step is to get our rubbing alcohol. I have my awesome dollar store 50% isopropyl alcohol. Obviously, higher alcohol content would be great, but trying to show everybody on a budget what can be done. You're just going to clean these up really quick. Get all of that dust off of there. Anything that's stuck to the surfaces, you're going to end up sticking to it permanently. So not do a, do a little bit of work here to get in between all of the nooks and crannies. And you've noticed I haven't really touched anything inside. It kind of looks like garbage if you look in there. It's like looking down at the Grand Canyon there. Um, it's because it's never going to be seen. And uh, there's really no point to spending all that time. You want to look and make sure that your acoustic tubing will do okay and make it through there. And you want to clean up. Sometimes you get some um, some stringy PLA going back and forth inside of the canals in there. Um, but it, it's it's on this, it's really not a big deal because it's all going to be enclosed out of sight, out of mind. Uh, okay. We'll get the tops. So one thing I have done to make life a little bit easier for myself is I bought a little carousel. I'm not sure what it's actually for, but it's, I think it might be for like displaying something, kind of like jewelry on, on a display case of sorts, or maybe like a miniature or something. Um, this one appears to be solar powered because it's spent with nothing. I'm gonna grab a, a double A really quick. Basically, the reason why I want the AA battery is to be able to use this inside of a place with no light shining on it except for the, the UV rays. Um, one thing I've found to make my life easy is DAP. It's just like putty that you would stick things to the wall with. And it really helps me get things set up and, and to not move. So for this part of the process, I think that just for the sake of keeping it simple and saving some time, I'm gonna film doing one side and then we'll come back and you'll see magically that both sides are done. Um, we'll do one component at a time. So I'm gonna start here with the right shell. What I like to do is just get a lump of dab, put it right here, somewhere where it's going to get in there but not actually cause a lot of drama. See how you've got a little bit of separation between the shell and the surface? That's good. So now I'm going to take the photoplast out here and I'm going to just Paint it like I were painting nails. You can always come back and do more coats, so you don't have to get crazy. And in fact, on these, because of the, because I want the, the, the smoothness here, I'm gonna do quite a few coats probably. Probably gonna do like three. So my first coat is just an initial covering and making sure that I cover every single part of the, the shell. One thing I'm noticing is that even though I've roughed this up a bit, I'm actually seeing a lot of the Z banding still and it actually looks pretty cool to me. I'm thinking I'm gonna go with that. Could have could have spent a lot more time sanding, getting rid of that. I kind of like it. That's where I keep hitting the camera here, I'm trying to work in a space so you guys can still see. I'm just working my way around the canal. Just getting every part of the, the shell that I can see. 
trying to not create drips, trying to not create bubbles as I go. I've done enough of these, I could probably do nails at the local salon, I think. But, you know, don't be discouraged if you mess up the first round um, of curing. Because what ends up happening is you come back and you can just do a quick sanding on it. And then you can just recoat it. it. Covers all your mistakes. Okay, so this is pretty well coated at this point. So I'm going to set up the curing rig and uh, grab that. <clears throat> No. Deal with these later. Yeah, I don't know if you can tell the difference between just, you know, what throwing the photoplast on it does, but you can definitely see from here, from front of it, that gold now just really comes out of that. Um, these are just nail blocks from a nail salon, and I've only got them here so that I can get some clearance for this here. And I really want to get it so you guys can actually watch the process. So I'm going to move this back. Let's see. How are we here? You guys can almost see in there. Maybe look right. Right there. That might be about as good as I can do the setup I've got going. And uh, I'm going to do a 120 second cycle here and it's going to just hit it with UV. Now again, like I said, this is just a very simple UV acrylic nail curing light. This is nothing special. Um, made by, this one apparently has a name of Melody Susie. And Susie is misspelled. Um, so it's, it's really just don't don't stare at it too much, of course. In fact, I've got this mirror here that it came with for the bottom side. I'm just going to do this. And of course, I'm wearing glasses. UV protection is good when dealing with this. Um, and uh, we're going to get this thing out of here. As soon as it's done, we're going to sand it. We're going to coat it one more time with photoplast. And you'll be able to see hopefully how it how the, how it comes out. The reason why I like this a lot more than just painting with acrylic, say, is uh, it you get a, a hard surface just after like two minutes of time here curing, and uh, you don't have to do any post finishing work. There's no putting it into any kind of like an isopropyl alcohol bath or you know glycerin. Back in my old days when I was doing the invest in pour methods. With, with that other stuff. Um, this just is simple. It's It takes a little bit of time, but it's easy work. And the, it does great. Creates a really good seal within your ear to make sure that you get good sound and good bass response. Which is key with these little in-ear monitors. Um, when you when when you're getting ready to assemble these two, one thing I didn't really talk about is you have a pretty flat surface here, but it's always good when you're getting ready to to make sure that they attach is to just throw that on some sandpaper and just kind of work it in a circle here. Same here, it just depends on how you do the 3D prints, um, making sure that there's a, a really good surface for to bite for the uh, the adhesives that you'll end up using. Okay, looks like we are done with this. And just to show you, I can just pick this up. It's completely dry, completely ready to get another sand down, another coat. So to do that, I'm gonna move this guy out of the way and get rid of the dap that I was using. Grab my sandpaper. Actually, get this guy out of there too, a little bit. Now, one th one thing that you can use here if you really want, not not required by any means is it's called a polar block 
just nail salon, Amazon, anywhere. And it's a foam block that's like a sanding block, just like you would do for your drywall at your house, but really small and pretty fine grain. And it helps you really do a quick sand job on these once they're already cured. And you can get around all the corners really, really quickly. And I've seen a lot of guys actually just finish completely with sanding blocks. They'll start off with a rough grit like this polar block, but they will eventually move their way to even, you know, just different finer grain sanding blocks to where they can get like a glass-like finish. I don't have that time and effort with me though. It's really cool. I'm getting all around here. And then the canal. And once again, I'm just gonna clean it up with some isopropyl. Grab my towel for that. I still got some on there. When I finish up with this, I'm gonna just take it over to a sink as well and get all any dust that's inside the shell out. Something that's happening here that I'm not really excited about is I've got a layer separating here. And they print just like a cake. I'm gonna leave that in there for now. And maybe that has something to do with my 3D printer settings. Um, but I think ideally I'm gonna end up having to re-glue that or just peel off this one layer. One layer is obviously not gonna make a huge difference. You know, I'm just gonna rip it off now. Just hope it doesn't turn into more than one layer. Okay. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna make sure that it's generally speaking flat. So I'm gonna do the leaves on it. Photoplast here. Once again, we throw in my dab. Grab my rotating platform here. Get my photoplast. Just gonna paint it over again. In this second coat, I'm gonna be a little more liberal with than the first. I'm not going to clean the brush and knock any of the material off of it. As I dip, I'm just going to load the whole brush up, paint it. Looks great, actually. At the end of the canal here. Man, these are gonna look cool. No one will probably ever see much of them because they're inside your ear, but definitely a very cool color. And the good news is that, like if you just if you mess up on something, you just come back later and throw some more photoplast down and recure it. Definitely helps out with the build process if it simplifies that. Let's talk a little bit about bubbles here. Sometimes if you've got too intense of a UV source like if you're using really cheap $12 nail lights from Amazon. Um, you might run into a situation where it creates bubbles just from curing too fast. And one way I've worked around that is I've just bought a cheap UV light here. 
you know, and I just put that above it, you know, I would say about, about a foot and a half and just rotated that around underneath that flashlight before throwing it into the oven for the cure. And uh, it's, it's basically doing a little bit of the front end of the work of the curing so that you don't have to hit, hit it with all that force <laughs> as it were all at once. Um, for this case though, because uh, that mostly just happens with the actual face plates, I'm gonna set this guy up again and we are going to just do it without doing the flashlight and hope we don't get bubbles this time around. Throw the mirror on there again. So, so far, the most expensive thing here that we've had was the, the photoplast. It, it is really expensive. You can do quite a few pairs of these, though, with one, one bottle of this stuff. And obviously, I should probably be wearing gloves. Um, lots of things in German and really nasty-looking pictures here. Um, I actually don't know what this one is, which, but I've definitely got my door and my window open. I'm out in my garage, so I, I know that I've got plenty of ventilation going in here, um, and I, I'd recommend that. It's, uh, it's, it's expensive, but it works. Looking in here to see, oh, but kind of just taking a peek here, it does appear that I don't have bubbles. Yeah, it looks good. You know, personal protection equipment is good. Nobody needs this stuff getting onto them or into them, so. All right, once this is done, I think what I'll do is uh, I'll go ahead and, and finish up the rest of this and get to the point where I rig something up with um, the face plates to explain kind of how I would hover the, the flashlight, the, the UV flashlight above it for about five or 10 minutes before loading it into the oven so we could get rid of those, those bubbles before they actually happen. Probably close to done. Give it a few more. <laughs> yeah. Doing pretty well. Still no bubbles. And we're done with that. So as you can see now, it's got really wet looking finish, but it's totally dry. You can still see some of the Z banding depending on the, the angle that you're at. And it, it feels great though. Um, but you can get a pretty cool finish for pretty cheap, relatively speaking. You know, these are gonna be those six drivers. So I don't know what it would cost to buy me a professional set of six drivers, but this is looking pretty cool. All right, so I'll get back to you guys as soon as I rig up one of the face plates. Well, here we are, guys. We've got my super fancy rig system, which is a couple clamps, cheap, UV acrylic curing flashlight from Amazon. You can kind of tell about where it's gonna hit. When the lights go off, you can see the black light look there. Okay, it's a little easier there, so I've kind of lined that up. And in the meantime, I wanted to show you guys, before we get to doing the face plates, I wanted to show you how great these shells turned out. They're awesome, they almost look like marble. Very cool. I really like them. I like the way those turned out. Okay, so face plates are a little different. Face plates, you want to put the photoplast on thick. It's uh, that that's the problem though, because you want it on thick, you also don't want bubbles. 
I take really tiny pieces of dap to stick the face plates to this platform. Because again, you don't want to accidentally paint it to the platform. And you really want to try your best to get it level because as it sits level that you know it's almost like floating a floor you want it the, the photoplast to pull up just right and not run off the edges okay so when you're doing photoplast you're going to start with the face plate. So you're going to start towards the largest part of the face plate and you're going to kind of move outward from there hope you guys could see this okay if I do this, yeah, it looks good. Okay. So grab a bunch of it. Just put a big dot on it. Grab another big dot of it. I'm going to do like three to start. And I'm going to move from the center. I'm just going to kind of push this outward. And there's little bubbles I'm seeing, which are no bueno. No oh, good. So I'm trying to make sure that I pop those as I go with the brush. Real soft, real small brush strokes. Not really pushing into the face, but just sort of dragging the, the top of the fluid around here. That's how you make less bubbles. And so this is looking pretty, pretty good, except for one thing. It's not enough. So, normally, remember on the other ones, we would cure this. But for these, I'm just going to make sure it's super thick. And I'm kind of going to dab the bubbles now. Grab Loading up the brush with the photoplast. Dabbing at the bubbles. Popping them. Just kind of looking for bubbles here. Seeing a few down here. You know, the first that you're gonna do, if I'm honest, they're probably they're probably gonna suck. <laughs> it's just it's all part of the learning, though. And on this end, it looks like I still got some weirdness going on here. Remember, however it looks when you cure it is how it's gonna stay. So take your time on this on the application part. Yeah, you learn so much by failing at these. But, a really cool hobby after a while. Okay, that side looks great. Okay. Go over the undone side now. Once again, I'm going to load it up. Kind of a shame because I'm just gonna cover these in wood veneer, but all the effort anyway is a shame. But hopefully somebody learns something and doesn't have to go through what I went through to figure all this out. That's my hope. I would also just say that it, I've done, you know, if you do black PLA. You're really not gonna have all this banding. I, what it looks like is it looks like because of the the gold that we have here in this PLA, which I think is awesome. It really has a hard time getting sanded out all the banding, um, especially when you're putting a nice clear coat over it like this. You really see it. Some people will like that. For me, I really like it on the shells. I think the shells look awesome, but I would not want to have face plates that looked this banded. So, noticing another air bubble on the other. There you go. What I did there is I just loaded up the brush and just kind of tapped it over like I'm doing on the other one now. Like I said, it's okay to take your time. 
sure beats going back later and re-sanding them down and redoing them. Those look good though. Okay. So my next step is I've got to make sure that I've got, I'm going to turn off my lights again. I'm going to, it's moved because of my door moved here. I'm going to drop these guys right onto there. I'll try and block the light so you can see that where the UV light is casting onto it. Uh, but yeah, gonna basically wait to set a 10 minute alarm. It doesn't hurt to go longer. Maybe I'll do 15, but um, in essence, what it's gonna do is it's gonna cure that top layer to the point where it's tacky. Um, some kind of a reaction happens when you give it too much UV and it creates bubbles underneath the surface. <laughs> So doing this, like a kind of a, a mild UV light for a while will really help it to, to set it up so that when we do cure it, it just bakes it off. So I'll be back in a bit. And we are done with the top cure. So if you get in here, you can see that the UV, I ended up going 15 minutes actually just felt like it would be much easier, much less headache to spend five minutes now rather than 20 minutes later. Because, and it's really no big deal. If you do end up getting bubbles that come through after you bake them off in the oven, you just get some sandpaper, you sand the tops down, you clean them with some more isopropyl, and you then just throw some more photoplasts on them. Um, and you wanna make sure though, what I, one other thing I didn't mention before was Let's say that we had it like this and we noticed there was an imperfection now. What I would recommend is just bake it off. If you add photoplast, you know, to half cured photoplast, bad things happen in the oven. Um, so I, I, I think that it's best for us to, to just, if this did have an imperfection, to just run it through, bake it off, sand it down a little bit, do the photoplast again and then do the the uv cure with the flashlight and throw it back in the oven but for now we're in good shape so i'm going to move the camera over here sorry for my fingers in there try and sneak this guy into the nail oven i want to make sure that you guys can see yeah it looks like you can so now I'm going to kind of poke my head down here. Again, I'm wearing UV protected glasses, but um, obviously direct UV exposure for these. People put their hands in them all the time for their nails, so I think we're okay. Limited exposure, but still, I'm not a scientist or an expert. Um, welcome to YouTube. Uh, so as I'm watching, I'm looking for bubble ups. I'm looking for large sections of the the face plates to bubble out. I don't see any so far. It's looking like there might be one on the right side of the bottom. Eh, not too bad. Not too bad, right there. Um, it's actually doing pretty well. Okay, so now that I've got this going, I'm going to throw the mirror in front of it. Keep that UV light where it belongs. Um, then when this gets done, I'll go ahead and show you the finished product. Well, here we go, the finished product. They look awesome. I, I think that there's a very, very small bubble that I did see with the right side, but I really can't find it anymore. Let me see if I can move the camera around. If you look at right here, Right at the bottom tip of that, you can kind of see that weird little impression there. But you know, it's not anything that people would notice. I love the way they turned out. It almost to me looks like a bowling ball. Kind of an interesting, interesting look. Yeah, very cool material. So thanks to the Protopasta guys who have been making some amazing cool colors. And I, again, just want to stress the fact that it's really important to utilize something that is a legitimate 
tool for coding, like Photoplast Lag 3. Um, it's used in hearing aids, hearing aid repairs all over the, the whole world, really. And uh, it's it's safe. And uh, as you can see, it's, it's, it's hard surface. It's They're very, very durable. Um, you're not gonna have trouble with these as much as, you know, within reason. I've, I've been wearing them, you know, and got off a stage and had them fall off onto the ground, onto concrete many times. I've, I've you know, I have broken one. I slammed one in a car door on accident once. <laughs> but, uh, but they're otherwise, you know, if you're, generally speaking, they're, they're a pretty good way to go. Uh, I'd imagine they're on par with, with other top-ended brands as far as durability goes. Yeah, you know, and if, of course, this is for the DIY crowd. So if you can afford the sweet <laughs> in here, you should definitely go that route. This is more for the people like me that are just doing this for fun, to enjoy having the ability to start with nothing and come up with something that's pretty cool. Anyway, appreciate you for watching. Thank you.